Hi guys, Eugenia Kachevsky here, your trusted property advisor in Pattaya, Thailand. And this is your go-to channel for expert lifestyle, relocation, and all things real estate in Pattaya City. I'm thrilled to bring you the latest updates and significant news on the vibrant property market in our beautiful beach town on the shores of Siam Bay. Now, over the last few months, I've been collecting exciting and significant news about Pattaya City development and a few others that will have a direct impact on the local real estate market. So just a few headlines of the news that I will discuss in today's video. Pate City monorail project approved. Let's find out when and where it's going to be built. Construction of Utapao Pate International Airport expansion project is planned to start very, very soon. So let's find out when. Cruise ship terminal in Pattaya. Well, that's something interesting. Agoda is ranking Thailand as the second most popular destination in the world. So let's find out all the details about it. MGM and Galaxy Casino operators are setting up offices in Thailand to explore opportunities of opening casinos in the country. Well, if you're a property investor, you should be definitely watching this video and finding out more details about this news, which, uh, which have been quite heavily discussed on the media uh, over the last few months. So stay tuned and let's go through all these topics with me today. Guys, before we start discussing the news in this video, please tap on that subscribe and like button down below. It shows me that you like the content which I'm making for you and also it motivates me to make more videos. Please don't forget to like, subscribe and tap on that notification button so you don't miss any new exciting news about Pattaya City and the real estate market here in future. So let's get back to video and I hope you enjoy it. Stay tuned. I've been living in Pattaya for over a decade now and um, the change that the city went through and the development of the city has been huge. You just don't recognize some of its areas right now compared to 10 years ago or 15 years ago. Um, and the future of the city is looking even more exciting. The government of Thailand is investing huge amounts of money and creating these um, investment funds uh, that are going to be directed to uh, development of the local tourism, economy and infrastructure in the city. So in the next five to ten years there are big changes that are coming to the city and um, in today's news we're gonna cover some of the most exciting infrastructure projects that are coming in the nearest future. So let's jump into more details about what those new infrastructure projects in Pattaya are going to be. Bangkok Post, the Pattaya to construct four monorail lines. Now, that sounds quite a big, uh, big development. End of June, Pattaya Deputy Mayor chaired the fourth public hearing on the feasibility study and environmental impact assessment for the Pattaya City monorail development project. Now, fourth hearing. They've been discussing what type of public transportation is going to be the best for Pattaya. There have been a few ideas discussed. One of them was the uh, Pattaya city tram, Same, similar like in some cities of Europe. Well, that one was declined because the mayor of Pattaya and people of Pattaya think that it's going to bring even more traffic congestion when the trams are going to be using the same roads as other cars and motorbikes, etc. So they decided to go with the uh, Pattaya monorail project which is same like BTS in uh, Bangkok uh, for somebody who, you, who have already been uh, in Bangkok, know uh, BTS very, very well. For somebody who has never been to Bangkok yet, you can just Google and uh, see what um, the BTS uh, SkyTrain system looks like in Bangkok. So this one, um, more than 80% of those present at the hearing public hearing agreed that the monorail was the most suitable system for Pattaya City. It will begin with 9.9 km Green Line route which will connect the future high-speed train station to Bali High Pier and will have 13 stations. He said Pattaya plans to build the Green Line first, adding it would give passengers of the future Dongwang, Suvanapum and Utapao high-speed rail routes easy access to Pattaya Beach. Here. We must go back in time a little bit. Um, 
because some of you probably don't know about this high speed train whatever um, so for somebody it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be new so I have to go go back a little bit to uh, explain to you more about the high speed rail project which is coming here very very soon Eastern Economic Corridor High Speed Rail or EEC HSR project was proposed a few years ago by the Thai government this high-speed rail system aimed to connect three major airports in the Bangkok metropolitan area Suvarnabhumi Airport, the biggest airport in uh, Thailand Domwang International Airport, which is the second biggest airport in Bangkok and in the whole of uh, country and Utapao International Airport in Pattaya now we're going to talk more about Utapao International Airport uh, in the other news topic that we're going to discuss today so the government plan is to connect three major airports in the country with a high-speed train project and one of the stations of this high-speed train project is going to be located just 10 kilometers away from Pattaya city center the project is aimed to enhance transportation infrastructure and boost economic development in eastern economic corridor where Pattaya and Utapao airport are located additionally the project aim to stimulate investment in the EEC region and support its industrial and tourism sectors as according to the EEC Secretary General in May in May this year currently the land for construction is being allocated to the contractor and the entire project land is anticipated to be handed over to the contractor by October 2023 which is like three four months away from now Additionally, it is expected that the private sector will receive the notice to proceed NTP to begin the construction sometime in 2023. Now guys, all the news I'm discussing today, I'm gonna drop the link in the description to this video. If YouTube doesn't allow me to put the external links in the description to this video, you can uh, request uh, which news are you interested in the most and then I can uh, send you the link in comments and also I will try to put this uh, news links in the comments down below so I'm not creating any of these news they're not coming from my head I'm using the official public sources which are trusted sources uh, big news channels or official government websites so and I'm taking only the key facts from from this news and these are the only news which I'm which we are discussing in today now as according to the Bangkok Post the high-speed rail is expected to be completed by 2029 which is less than seven years from now now the, the land problem is the biggest step land is privately owned in Thailand some some land can be uh, government owned some land can be owned by private individuals or private uh, private companies so this land allocation is the first huge milestone for this project because before they can approve the construction and the contractor can start building the high-speed rail they got to make sure that all the land along this line including the land for the future train stations have been handed over to the main contractor so they can be 100% sure that no complications gonna arise and if the land is not allocated there are not gonna be delays when the construction starts so this is the first big step that they have to make and accomplish uh, and they say they're gonna do it by October 23 so hopefully by the end of this year all the land plots are gonna be allocated to the contractor and then they uh, can start building the actual uh, high-speed rail system and it will take them uh, from now six to seven years to build well some some of you may say well this is not really quite too soon but six or seven years it's actually sooner than you think you know time flies these days you know everything happens so quickly and before you know it you'll be able to travel from Bangkok to Pattaya and it's gonna take you probably somewhere between 50 minutes to an hour and a bit depending to which airport you're going to from each airport in Bangkok like Dongmong and Suvarnabhumi airport 
they are linked by MRT or BTS SkyTrain uh, system already. So for example, if you wanted to go to Bangkok, it would take you in the future 50 minutes from Pattaya by high-speed train. You can hop off either in uh, Suvarnabhu Madomwang Airport, hop on the public um, transportation system like BTS or MRT and be within Bangkok anywhere you want within less than 20 minutes. So this is very, very convenient. Hopefully the tickets for the high-speed train are not going to be uh, uh, too expensive and they're going to be very, very accessible to a lot of people. So I hope guys you see the bigger picture now. So that's why I had to make this loop and for some of you who are new to Thailand, who are new to Pattaya, they don't know what's happening. I had to go back a little bit in time to explain what's coming so then you can see a bigger picture. So the bigger picture is they finished building the um, SkyTrain. There's going to be a train station in the east side of Pattaya, which is like 10 kilometers away from the Pattaya city center. The government of Pattaya city, the mayor of Pattaya city, saying that this monorail project, this new green line, is going to be the first line that is going to be built in Pattaya and it's going to be connected to the future high-speed train uh, station. So the big picture is you hop on a sky train in 50 minutes to an hour, bang, you're down in Pattaya. You hop off the train station in Pattaya, then you jump on a BTS sky train or whatever they call here the monorail project which is going to be interlinked with the Pattaya uh, train station and within just a few minutes you're going to be anywhere within Pattaya city center or you can hop over the end station which is Bali High Pier that's where you can take a boat either to Kolon Island this is where the Pattaya uh, famous walking street area uh, is located nearby too and you can explore Pattaya city during the day I'm sure it's going to boost more tourism, it's going to bring a lot of people to uh, Pattaya and you can be able to do uh, convenient day trips or weekend trips without relying on like buses and driving your own car or taxi or anything like this. Some people, like my wife for example, you know, she gets sick when she travels on the bus, you know, because it you know, can be shaking a little bit or whatever. So train is much more comfortable, smooth. So, Let's hope that this project is not gonna be delayed for many years. Now let's move on from railway to aviation. Utapao Pattaya Airport expansion project is planned to start construction in early 2024. The CEO of Utapao Company International Aviation added, Utapao Airport and Eastern Aviation City construction are now underway in their first phase of piling expected to start in early 2024. The first phase is targeted to open in 2027 and is expected to serve 12 million passengers per year. When airport use reaches 80% of the traffic volume at its maximum capacity, UTA will begin construction of phase two immediately, as according to Bangkok Post. Another great news about Pattaya, brand new, huge airport, which will definitely put Pattaya more on the global map, it will make the city even more accessible, more direct flights from many, many cities around the world. So it will be great if in three, four years time, a lot of you will be able to book a direct flight from uh, anywhere where you are, direct to Pattaya, and it will save you an hour and a half on taxi ride from Suvarnabhum airport because this is the nearest airport, the nearest international airport there is close to Pattaya. All local people who live in Pattaya or regular visitors, uh, tourists, all want to see Pattaya to be a global city hub for traveling, business and more investments in future. And I'm sure the future airport is going to bring more opportunities to the city and um, will make it more accessible from overseas visitors, will be beneficial to the local businesses, local tourism, local infrastructure, and it will make it even more convenient for living in future, which in turn will create more demand for uh, property, just because it's gonna be more convenient for from anybody from overseas to fly in and out of uh, Pattaya. Now, some of you may ask, 
Well, if there is an airport, Suvarnabhum Airport, which is easily accessible, it's only an hour and a half drive from Pattaya by car, bus or taxi, why do they need another airport, which is only like 30 minutes down the road from Pattaya? I mean, why do they need to spend the money and build another airport? Well, the government made a projections that the, the, the total number of tourists from now until 2028 is going to increase immensely. So the next news which I'm going to talk about only support these projections. As according to Pattaya Mail, Thailand has achieved significant success securing the second position as the world's most preferred tourist destination worldwide following Japan as according to Agoda's recent survey. Well, a lot of you know for sure that Agoda and Booking.com, same company, uh, the world's most popular booking engine for accommodation, hotels, apartments, houses, villas, etc. They have done a recent survey and the survey results show that there has been a remarkable increase by approximately 60% in the number of foreign tourists seeking information about Thailand over the past few months compared to 2019 figures. So compared to 2019 figures, we didn't have no COVID in 2019. There was no flight restrictions. There were no like uh, all these like craziness that were going during the COVID-19 and the people who are seeking information about traveling to Thailand has increased by 60 percent that's like almost like double and uh, obviously it shows a great positive trend for Thailand that are more and more people are interested to travel to this part of the world because it's very accessible right now there are four main airports that you can fly in and out from most of the world's countries direct to Thailand. It was in another, in another news somewhere that the total number of uh, foreign arrivals in 2023, and it's not end of 2023 yet, it's only like we, we just only done like first half of the 2023, and the total number of uh, foreign arrivals to Thailand is almost close to where it was before COVID kicked in, you know, so that's, that's like great news. And obviously, COVID has gone. Europe and like some other destinations in the world are becoming more expensive, like hotels, uh, food, uh, transportation, etc. Thailand still remains a very, very affordable or inexpensive uh, place to go to compared to Europe now. For example, I was in Florence two years ago. I mean, or a year and a half ago. A place on Airbnb uh, during COVID, which was for like 50, 60 euros, now is like 100, 120 euros. And try to book one of those. You know, you will not find anything available, you know, and I was traveling like around May. So it was not like, you know, super peak season. I mean, it was like just start of the like high season, but it was not like a big time, you know. And if you compare prices for like hotel and accommodation in Thailand, prices are like two times less, maybe sometimes even three times less. You can find hotel rooms like as cheap as 20 30 dollars a night and they're not gonna be like some um crappy hotels you're gonna have like the room service you're gonna have reception desk you're gonna have a, a, a swimming pool they're not gonna be located in the middle of nowhere they're gonna be located somewhere like in the city center or very close to the city center easily accessible you know or it's gonna be located very very close to the beach a hundred bucks a night here in Thailand can get you a very, very, very good hotel. Either in the center of Bangkok, uh, it's gonna be four or five star, you know, with breakfast, everything, everything's included, brand new hotel, high rise tower, beautiful views, it's gonna be something like Marriott or whatever. You know, 100 to 150 bucks can get you something that you would pay in Europe maybe $300 or $400 or $500 a night, you know? So that's why more and more people are looking for information to go to Thailand because they know they only need to buy a ticket to travel, to fly here. And when they arrive, their money doubles. I know a lot of you are not gonna say, well, Thailand is not as cheap as, as it used to be. Yes, it's not cheap as it used to be. Nowhere is cheap as it used to be. 
you know, but it's still significantly more affordable than other countries and other destinations, you know. So, and the good thing about Thailand, you know, there is a beach season all year round. I mean, I could turn the camera around and, you know, we, today is the 19th of July, 2023, and it's supposed to be like a middle of the rain season. You know, this, this year from June to the middle of July, uh, July in Patia, we had almost no rain. You know, there, there was maybe like, you know, four or five times there was a rain. There was a rain this morning and then, you know, from uh, 10 o'clock, there was no rain at all. Now it's sunshine. So what I'm trying to say is, you know, 10 months out of 12, Thailand or Pate in particular, is a beach destination all year round almost. 10 months a year. So it has a huge potential. The government making their projections correct. A god is approving it. Uh, and that's why they need uh, more airports and more ways to bring more travelers to Thailand. A lot of people who've never been to Thailand, when they come here, they go, oh wow, that's amazing. Nice roads, easy to travel around the country. Everything is accessible. Everybody speaks English, very, very safe. You know, and when they come here first time, they think, oh my God, I didn't know you can buy property. I didn't know you can buy condominium in my own name how much blah 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 and that's when more investments come to country first they travel find out about it they fall in love with it they want to come back then next thing they start thinking why don't we buy a holiday home why don't we buy an investment property why don't we move here for like a, a retirement or why don't we buy here a like you know winter home vacation home so it will bring huge potential to this area and Pattaya needs airport like crazy. There is an international airport in Phuket, uh, very, very easy to fly in and out of Phuket from like, you know, Europe, Middle East, uh, Asia, Australia. And when there's going to be a new airport in Pattaya three to five years from now, it's going to be the same like Phuket. You know, very easy. Don't need to fly direct to Bangkok, straight to Pattaya. Great news for the city. And that's not all for today about new, exciting infrastructure development projects that are coming or are planned to happen in Patea in the nearest future. So this is the final one. Patea is coming up with new ideas how it can increase its attractiveness for more high spending tourists as the demand for the cruise tourism is rising globally. The Marine Department has proposed a plan to build a cruise ship terminal at Bali High Pier. If approved, the cruise terminal could be opened in 2029, as according to Bangkok Post. The plan, however, will need to be approved by the new government. Once completed, the port will be the first in Thailand that is designed specifically to serve large cruise ships. Now, that's, a, it, that's, that's another great news. I mean, if these guys already talking about the cruise ship terminal. They now, like, and they, they're discussing it officially, uh, making like public hearings and all that. It means, you know, they're becoming more and more serious about it. They want to bring more high spending tourists to Patia and few other locations where they're gonna uh, build these uh, cruise ships, uh, cruise ships, etc. And the city has already got a pier. I mean, you know, it's, it's going to be very, very easy for them to build just another extension that is specifically designed for the cruise ships to park. People can go, explore the city, uh, spend more few days nearby, you know, spend money, discover and learn about the city. Some of them surely are going to come back here by, by airplane to spend more time because I'm sure a lot of them will go like, oh, wow, this is a nice place. And then uh, it's, it works the same way as the airport. The more ways tourists can come, the more exposure the city is gonna get, the more experience people are gonna get in Patia, and more of those are gonna decide, well, why don't we come back here and spend you know, a week or a few uh, so we can get a, a better feel about the city. After they, get, after they get a better feel about the city, a lot of them will think, well, seems like the property is uh, quite accessible here. The prices, you know, there are many options you can choose from and uh, it seems uh, inexpensive to own and we can buy and own it in our name. 
So a lot of them will also uh, will think about this opportunity to buy property here. And uh, I, think it's a, it's, I think it's a great move by the government of, of Pattaya or Thai government in general. You know, as the, as the uh, international cruises around the world uh, also recovering after COVID, there is a higher demand for this. You know, especially uh, in, the, in the Asian region, people can come from places like Hong Kong or Singapore or perhaps Australia where people get higher incomes and when they come to Thailand, they can spend more money here. I mean, this is, this is a brilliant plan. Now I want you to see the big, big plan which is coming to the city. First, high-speed train station near Pattaya. Stop, hop off, get on the monorail. Monorail takes you to the Bali High Pier. Cruise ship terminal, also in Bali High Pier. See what you see what see like how the how it's all like interconnected with you know because when you're reading all these news like separately you can't put it all together so there's a logical chain that's linking all these infrastructure projects together so if you live in Bangkok and you want to hop on one of these cruises bang take a high-speed train hop on a monorail on a cruise ship if you come from the cruise ship you can also think well what are we gonna do here for the like you know four or five days we don't know anything about the city then you know people say well you know you can get a ticket you can go to Bangkok for a day you can come back it only takes you an hour there an hour back you know you can spend a great day there or you can stay in Pattaya or you can come from Bangkok and then spend the day in Pattaya so the city is offering or plans to offer a variety of all kinds of activities and it offers a huge interconnectivity with other regions of Thailand and other countries of the world. So people who are going to travel here in future are going to have so many options how they can come and visit and experience the city either by airplane, by cruise ship, by driving, by taking a train from Bangkok you know, the options are gonna be almost like unlimited, which makes the city even more comfortable for living in future, more exciting, and the city will have more things to offer to people who come Olivia. So if you, if you can't see this bigger picture, I hope, you know, my video helps you to see it. And uh, if you are a property investor, if you don't know, which uh, part of uh, Thailand to invest in. You know, you should think of this. You should think of what things are coming to the city and why my property is going to be in high value, in high demand. Why should I invest here than over there? So let's say, for example, you bought something in Pattaya, five years down the line, high-speed train, great. Brand new airport, even better. Cruise ship, wow. You know, and I can suggest you the location where you could be uh, buying right in the center of all this. So you can have an easy access to the, to the, to the, to the cruise ship terminal, for instance, uh, monorail project, high-speed train, and easy, uh, easy travel to uh, the airport. So guys, if you have any questions about the local real estate market, drop your questions down below. And if you want to know more about this, um, uh, like development opportunities, just send me a message on WhatsApp. My link is over there also. You can find me by the same name on social media, Instagram, Facebook. You know, drop me a question. I'll be happy to uh, give you more details and um, exp explain you more about, um, about the city and how it's going to develop. Now we've got, we've got only two news topics to cover in this video. So guys, don't switch to another channel, watch until the end, because this is very important and you're gonna like what I will say. Foreigners spent more than $500 million on condominiums in Thailand during the first quarter of 2023. Now, only first three months of this year and only within first six months since the country was reopened yeah uh, in October 2022 Thailand has fully reopened no COVID tests no nothing just book a flight and can go and travel straight to Thailand 
So within the first three months of this year, people have spent 500 million USD on condominiums. Foreigners, excluding Thai people, yeah? Foreigners, half a billion dollars. A total of 3,775 condominiums worth around half a billion US dollars were transferred to foreigners from January to March. The Real Estate Information Center said. Now, uh, this news was published on The Nation Thailand. Chinese, Russian, US citizens, Britons, and Germans were amongst top five nations of Thailand condo buyers. The top province where foreigners have bought the most condominiums and apartments in the first quarter was Chomburi, where Pate is located, 1,600 units, and Bangkok region, 1,423 units. The Thai capital and Chomburi's eastern resort city, means Pattaya, together make up nearly 85% of all condos bought by foreigners in the first three months of this year. So if you want to know where the real demand for condominiums is by foreigners, it's in Pattaya, Chomburi and Bangkok. 85% of all condominiums that have been bought by foreigners within the first three months of 2023 was in these two major cities. And this news answers it all. Now you can see why they're building the uh, high-speed train project. You know why they want to uh, bring the cruise ship terminal. You know why they need another airport. And you know why they want to build the Pattaya city monorail because with their increased demand for, uh, for condominiums and property in the city, with increased demand for tourism uh, and uh, overseas travels, there must be a new infrastructure that can take it all, that can service it all, that can offer the convenience of foreign travelers, for foreign travelers, the convenience of traveling and accessibility of 21st century. Now, I'm very, very excited and I'm glad the nation Thailand has published these figures because that sounds very, very, very impressive. The last and the not the least, this is not like, you know, this is, this is speculative news. This is not something that's, you know, 100% gonna happen or will happen, but the uh, potential is very, very high. For some of you who are property speculators who don't mind to take the risk, who uh, buy and hold investors, who's got patience and don't mind to wait until the big money wave hits Thailand and Pattaya, you've got to hear this news. Some of you who are maybe gamblers in some sort because these news are about gambling. So Galaxy and MGM casino operators ready to roll the dice in Thailand. Thailand Business News posting. The two casino operators, Galaxy and MGM, are apparently keen on tapping into Thailand's potential as a gambling hub in Southeast Asia. Both companies have established local offices in Bangkok and have been conducting market research and lobbying efforts, according to sources. Thailand has long been a popular destination for tourists, but it has also been a strict no-go zone for casinos, as gambling is illegal under Thai law. However, there have been some signs of change recently, as a casino resort's proposal won cross-party support in the last house and is expected to be approved by the new government. The proposal argues that legalizing casinos would boost Thailand's economy, create jobs, attract more foreign visitors and reduce illegal gambling activities. It also suggests that casinos should be located in special economic zones or border areas 
that strict regulation and taxes should be imposed on them. Have you heard this? Special economic zones. Pattaya, Chomburi is a special economic zone. It's part of the EEC government project, which we spoke about a bit earlier when we were talking about the railway project. EEC stands for Eastern Economic Corridor. That's linking three provinces, Chechengsao, Chomburi and Rayong, which are all located uh, on the eastern seaboard of um, the Bay of Thailand and are directly connected to the capital of Bangkok. So both companies are facing challenges in the core markets as Macao's gaming revenue has been hit by China's crackdown on corruption and money laundering, while Las Vegas has been struggling to recover from the pandemic. Expanding into new markets like Thailand could help them diversify their sources of income and hedge against risks. So now, this is super exciting. I mean, this is probably the most exciting news out of them all that we've covered today. So, now, just, just you guys got to listen very, very careful here. Look, two biggest casino operators in the world have already opened their representative offices in Bangkok to discover opportunities about gambling here. Now, what it says, because you got to read between the lines, you got to read between words. There is no smoke without fire. There has been rumors happening and flying around the Thai media over the last five, six, seven years that Pattaya is going to become new Las Vegas, new Macau, new gambling capital of Southeast Asia, and the city has got everything for it. It's got the location, it has got the, the image of like the uh, nightlife destination. It's very, very famous among tourists from all around the world. America, Europe, Australia, Asia, India, you know, Middle East, you name it. And now, because all the countries uh, around the world are recovering from the pandemic, they're all searching for the new streams of revenue. They're all uh, using all opportunities they have to create uh, and open new industries that can make the money for the country and can make the tax money for the country for, for future development. So these guys, surely they've got more information than me or any kind of average John has got on the street about this like gambling news and gambling laws. But one thing I know, like I said, there is no smoke without fire. If they have been spending money for research um, lobbying, opening offices in, in Thailand to explore opportunities, they know something that we don't. Now, the new government, there's been new elections, the opposition has won, uh, the democratic opposition has won in Thailand. I don't want to go too much into politics. So basically all you need to know, the old government um, that has been ruling the country for the last like eight years or so, military government has been kicked out from the parliament they got only just minimal number of seats the new prime minister is coming is coming in basically it's going to be a new government set in thailand the pro democratic uh, government that's going to uh, that are going to develop businesses they want to boost the economy they want to they want to increase number of tourists and they want to help thailand to become uh, richer and they want to have more industries that gonna create money for everybody in the country yeah so just last year just i mean look at this thailand has been one of the strictest countries in the world for um for drugs especially and including like the the the, the light drugs like marijuana so nobody could expect it but last year they fully legalized it I mean, it opened the multi-million dollar industry, created huge opportunities for, uh, for jobs, making money, uh, opening businesses. And since October, September last year, or August, until now, there's been only like, what, six months, eight months? You cannot imagine how many businesses have opened. 
that are related to cannabis. Can you now you can see cannabis cafes, cannabis shops, uh, cannabis hotels, cannabis tourism, you know, and you know, this new uh, legalization of marijuana that just happened recently has created huge boom for the country and the, it's, it has become a huge money maker for farmers, for resellers, for hospitality, for airlines in, in the end, uh, for the God's sake, because you know, a lot of people who have never tried uh, marijuana before, you know, Amsterdam maybe is too far away from them, now they know that it's fully legal in the country, they're not gonna go into jail for, for doing this, they fly to Thailand, they try it, and it's just another kind of attractive thing for, for tourists from overseas where the marijuana is illegal to come to Thailand. And now, only just a year ago, it was completely illegal, totally illegal. You can get to jail for that. And now it's like completely, completely uh, in the green zone, the green zone. So for such a conservative country like Thailand, where the marijuana was always illegal, for, for all these years, for them to make it legal, I mean, now they're making the, the steps towards like liberalization, legalization, and to me, it shows that they're only just one or two steps away from legalizing gambling. The new government, the new era, they're all needing money, they're all needing direct foreign investments, they want to uh, boost tourism, they want to develop this part of, um, this region of Thailand is a special economic zone and Pattaya has got everything to make it happen. Infrastructure, the airport, the cruise ship terminal, the uh, high-speed train, accessibility, brand name. So Pattaya has a huge, huge potential to become a new gambling capital of Southeast Asia. And imagine once they legalize uh, gambling, in Thailand and, and make it possible and fully legal in Pattaya, imagine how the property prices are gonna skyrocket. All the prices are gonna go, they're gonna quadruple, triple, five times more. The land is gonna cost huge money. So look guys, I mean, I'm not saying it will happen tomorrow. Maybe it's gonna take 10 years or it might take them one year to, uh, push this new law and legalize gambling. And let's say it happens within one year, the new government's in place. They're gonna uh, elect the new prime minister uh, within the next few days. Imagine if this happens tomorrow, how many jobs this industry can create? How much international buzz it can make all around the world? How many investments it can attract to the city? Do you think it will have a positive demand for real estate? Do you think a lot of people would want to come here to work and be involved in this uh, huge multi-million billion dollar industry? Let me know in comments down below. Obviously we're gonna, if there are more updates coming about this, uh, this topic, I'm definitely gonna post more news uh, about this or other real estate, uh, real estate related news um, uh, in future on my channel. So let me, let me guys know your thoughts, what you think about this. Is it gonna be good for the city? Is it gonna be bad for the city? Uh, let's just discuss it in the comments. And if you have any questions about Pattaya, the lifestyle here, about the city, about the local real estate market, drop me a question. I'll be happy to, uh, to answer it and share my knowledge and experience to you. I hope this video was uh, interesting and informative to you. And I hope to see you uh, watching this channel uh, more and don't forget to subscribe again and see you in the future videos.